welcoming to the conversation, Linus. I cannot see you. I still can't see. I can, can see your reflection. Hands. There we go. Yeah. I can move for the camera. All right. Hey, recording. Hmm. Okay. We're talking check, about. Check, check. We're talking about general shit, right? right. Well, and certainly, like, discussing immortality is always pertinent to, like, discussing... We're talking about Ben and his projects. Yeah, he's a... Yes. Immortality. That's sort of like the... the well, the immortality, do you think infinity is real? Infinity is real? Or is it just a convenient approximation? I don't know how to even think about that question. <laughs> Have it's it's a mathematical reality. Is it? Sure. And how do you mean? I mean, because it's defined. Oh God, there's it, a whole is it infinity. really defined? There's an I mean, infinite number of infinities. There's an infinite number of infinities, and then you can even go beyond. Quite literally. And the question is, how real is math? Are you a mathematical realist? I think, I, I guess that you might be. That's a pretty good guess. I don't know, I'm, I an anti, added my... I'm an anti-Platonic mathematical realist. What is that? Wow. Mean? Is that like a like you know a ne well, it's negative exposure of Plato? I like that. Um, no, to be a Platonist in mathematics is to believe that numbers exist. That math Integers exists. exist. Remember, I asked you that question, and that ended up with the simulation argument. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh, yes. Well, because that's the natural direction where it leads. It's like numbers exist, we live in a simulation. It's like one step one, step two. But you don't believe that numbers exist if you're an anti plat platonist. Well, it was a form of a joke, right? I do, but I don't. I don't uh, know what days I believe. And I think it's an interesting, and uh, I entertain the idea. But um, certainly, I don't have enough to really enough knowledge about the subject to make a a real sort of educated well, you have to opinion. I mean, it's not like really hard. It's just sort of like okay, with math, you can make these amazing. I mean, math only exists in your mind, really, in minds. But but can okay, God? Okay, but can a, God? Can God change the value of pi? Does that question even make sense? Can God change the value of two and two? But God can change the value of pi in in the sense of like a map, because God can make a fake map. But God can't actually change the territory, which pi is meant to point to. But that's I mean, if, the if territory, he, the, the actual reality. If he did change it, how would you know? Because then pi would just always have been with a, cir a circle would always the ratio between the diameter of the circle. Okay, all of you know if you know so how would you know? Okay, can God change the value of two and two? Before. Yes, that's why right. he can change the value, but like it, 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 it won't fool everybody. It won't fool everybody. Like if God created the Bible, look how many people it fooled. Okay. I mean, did you change the value of pi by changing the topology know, of the Bible? Um, it sucked into the Bible. So, do you want a beer? No, I'll take a beer. Okay, he's taking a beer. Here's a beer. I've, I've pushed I've upon him. your beer. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, okay. What are the obstacles that AGI might be able to help with um, solving biology, as we were discussing? Um, I mean, solving biology. Well, I guess, I mean, that implies that biology is somehow solvable, though, which is an open question. Yes. Ergo, the simulation. Um, so we need a simulation to solve biology. Well, Maybe that's what they're trying to do. If reality was a simulation, then it would be solvable. Mm. Is it observed? Is what observed? Well, if we live in a simulation, is anyone even observing us? Yeah, no. Well, just because we're living in a simulation doesn't mean there's anybody who's conscious well, we, we in, observe, interested. We, we model weather on supercomputers all the time. That's why right. you don't care. I mean, yeah, it seems like you're you worried about the shit. Yeah, I'm going to go to the beach. Look I don't at look at the weather report. Maybe, maybe um, we were I mean, simulated, and they just left it some, like, in some like background process yeah. in the in some sort of supercomputer somewhere that they forgot about. Maybe yeah. that's our universe. 
Oh, maybe. Forgotten. I've the, forgotten. The, the, the people who, are, who forgot about it or yeah. don't notice it are still there. Though, so. Yeah, yeah. They don't, oh, maybe they just have so much computing power that it takes more resources to find us than it does to, you know, um, sure. to let us keep I mean, going. That's true now. Yeah. I mean, this is the risk of building an AGI and then asking us, asking it to help with. That's right. right. You know, if we, we start doing like really complex problems. computations, Wait, what's the risk then? maybe it will cause their their no. server to sort of spike a little bit, and then we'll get some sort of garbage collector process to come and trash our simulation. What do you think? Well, I, don't, I hope that doesn't happen. Like that. Uh, it shouldn't happen. Say Chinese sci-fi author. What's his name? Jackson. Oh, the um, the three last name? problem. Yeah. What's his last name? I can't remember. I, read I can't remember. pronounce the first name or the last name. So, book. therefore, we don't know who we're talking about. Well, and in his book, in, in one of the things he does in his book, which I, was, was new in science fiction to me, was the idea that other planets, by, unif by default, the universe is hostile towards you. Yes. And all you I have to do obvious. is do certain things, and you can trigger the destruction of planets, which, of course, he does the course of this thing. Like finding how Oops, physics so works and way. trying yeah, to yeah, nudge yeah, it in, so. in some certain directions and things go disasterly wrong. Well, I, I'm trying to figure out how much I'm more fine to say without I'm giving away no, yeah, 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 yeah. the plot <laughs> of the book. I'm kind of like, oh, I'm a favorite. Well, well, go go back to, to your what you were talking about, the biology problem. Oh, well, you asked you know, can AGI help us solve uh, biological, what, longevity and other issues? I said solve biology, but yes, let's step so, back a bit and solve some of biology. So, I, I mean, I just took the like about five things. jumps and said, okay, well, cell biology, the typical way you do it these days, you simulate as much of it as you can on a computer, and then if you can have a big computer, how much of it do you simulate? Big enough and say, well, let's just model a whole bunch of human beings on a whole bunch of planets and see what they do. <laughs> well, I don't think solving biology. Or, well, I guess we're talking about terrestrial biology. All right. So maybe I don't have enough compute power to do what I just said, but yeah, well, also I mean, that's like I mean, maybe a long term. Well, we don't have to worry about that now because we don't have any yeah, actual right. so short -term data. Yeah. Short term we don't have any extra short term data. Like a few hundred years. Yeah. Well. A few hundred is too long. I mean, maybe, okay, I mean, maybe you might find something on Mars or something that we can incorporate. Or That'd be awesome. Yeah. Imagine incorporating like a completely different phylogenetic genome into our systems. Like, you know, I mean, one of the have we, genomes. We probably would be a rush. Imagine that. Well, there is this graph of length of DNA sequences mm -hmm. versus time, backwards in time. Imagine what it would be like to smoke them. Have you seen this graph? No. Have you seen have you, you know this graph that I'm talking about? You I don't quite know if it's true. Yeah, the exponential one. Yes. I like curve fitting too. Do you remember where it, where the curve intersects? Um, around the time of the Cambrian explosion. I don't know. No. 13 billion years ago. Wait, That's so around the start of the universe. Just a little yes, bit after. Yes, a little after the start of the universe. Oh, wait. So, like, pretty... So like extrapolating mostly, length versus time? Yeah, it was a, it was a nice log graph. I, I don't know if it's true or not. It well, seemed to be true. Which one are you doing? The length nice of DNA thing. sequences versus the dates when the earliest organisms showed up. Did it or did it get this line? And then you say, well, where does it go to zero? Or where does it go to a small number? And it goes to a small number. At the beginning of the universe. Yeah, 10,000 years before Earth was created. Oh, before Earth was created. Oh, yeah. 10,000 yeah. years. Ten, what did I say? Ten you said 10,000 years. 10 billion. You said okay. 10,000. That's why I said that's just me being cloned <laughs> and impaired. Is this, yes, it's very impairing, beer. This is like... Well, that's because the right, there is okay. like the pan. The accepted yeah. age of the universe these days, I think, is what, 17 billion years old or something like that? Yeah. Or 15 well, that's billion? Well, I it's 13 billion. It's 13.8. 17.8 is that five four? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. they keep changing minds. Yeah, I don't know. That's what the internet is for. Mm. Where the error bar? So right? shortly after the birth of the universe, you've already got significant organic compounds running around. I mean, does that? Um, they're already at this kind of virus. You mean they're all bacteria around? size by the time they get to Earth? So no, they were just like weren't they just like amino acids? 
No, I, well... According to this graph, they're not. 13 billion years ago, they would be. I mean, that's what the log scale does. But by the time they get to Earth, essentially, you know, Earth has to start with something of the size of a bacteria. So it could have been, yeah, I mean, there's, so there's where definitely the like theories came of, from, they were, they're not native. Oh, you know, there's... It's not panspermia, which means it was an intelligent sort of system trying to distribute things. No, I, mean, I think panspermia is, doesn't have to be intelligent. Okay, right, right. So it doesn't, panspermia doesn't mean there was an intelligent person, like, trying to distribute sort of uh, seeds around the galaxy or the universe. So, so it could be like... Yeah, it could have just been meteors. Right. So, I mean, it could be anything from the yeah. asteroids bouncing around. I mean, well, I mean asteroids realize are it's their star ashes, their supernova ashes, basically. Yeah. So if you want to say, you know, what, what does it look like after a star explodes and leaves nothing behind? Say, oh. Well, if you if you're watching, are, you wouldn't be left behind. <laughs> okay, but what would it look like? Saying you asteroids. could be left behind asteroids. Yeah. Reckon stars. Explode yeah, I mean, the, the ship that we're seeing with the spacecraft, you say, look, that's just star shit. That, those are just ashes left over from exploded stars. That's where it came yeah, from. Yeah, well, stardust. Star we are, old. And we so are this, 10 billion year old carbon. Yeah. How yeah, about I like it. Lawrence yeah, Krauss, if you're watching this video, we thought of it first. I, I guess we would okay. ask who Lawrence Krauss is, but no. Okay, you so don't, this, this, you don't know who Lawrence Krauss. I Krause don't know who Lawrence Krauss is. I don't know. You don't. Know. See? Oh, okay. You're outvoted, man. This is a democracy. <laughs> Lawrence Krauss, you think you're a popular scientist, but I'm sorry, I'm outvoted. You're not that popular. Or is it just generation? <laughs> Oh, did we break somebody's ego? Well, or did they manage? Did. Are they sufficiently enlightened to survive this episode? <laughs> no, 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 he's doing quite well in the popular stage of science and especially physics. Yes, he wrote a universe of nothing, number hiding in the mirror, a number of other things. He likes to debate. He's a, a well-known atheist. He likes to debate religious people. And prove them yeah. wrong. I haven't read popular physics. You know, my dad used years, to do that. So. My dad was claimed to be a rigid atheist and just would get into all these debates with religious and religious topics. But what happened over life, I watched, he became an expert in all sorts of theology. It's like, okay, what, do, I, I, do, I, what, do, we, what do you do with an atheist who's an expert in theology? And it's like, you know, how, how am I supposed to interpret this? It's like, it's he became an expert in making people wrong. It's right? a <laughs> But I mean, after a while, I mean, yeah, you know, we're great. We're going to uh, make you feel good if you're just you are. You got to make like. sure that like none of these religions are actually like pan out. Yeah, but like I mean, we were in a museum and there's all this religious like religious pan out. Like, what do you say? They're not true. Well, oh, if, but if you decided they were true, then you couldn't be an atheist anymore. But if you were like, Truth far, is religion, like right? a rigorous atheist, then you'd want to explore. The option, the potential that they might actually be true. I'm going to think briefly off camera about how long it takes for us. We need to be there by 10. Before 10. 10? Yeah, yeah. Is it time to go? No, 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 it's not.